Eric, what are you doing? I'm trying to get my workout in, Clay. I told you not to bother me. What's up, guys? It is Eric from Varus Engineering, and as you can see, we have our front splitter installed. So that is what today's install manual is going to be about, installing the front splitter. I know a lot of you guys have been hitting us up and asking us when it's available. Well, we now have the first uh, eight or so pair sets ready, uh, and we will start cutting more splitter blades as necessary. We're gonna go through in the install manual, we're basically gonna go over what's included in the kit. We're gonna include, we're gonna go over what you need as far as tools to install the kit and then we will actually go ahead and install the front splitter. Now the front splitter is specifically designed to work with our UCW rear wing, which is also on the car. The front splitter does increase front downforce quite substantially. It is uh, a more downforce producing component than say our dive planes or the hood louver. So if you're looking for front end grip, I would recommend getting this front splitter. It is also chassis mounted in multiple locations and can easily handle my weight and probably another guy's weight as well, which we might go do here in a second. Yeah, well, let's get to the install. All right, so as far as kit components, we have the splitter halves, so one and two right there. We have air dam halves, one and two. We have the splitter brackets, which hold the splitter together. We have the crash beam brackets, which all bolt to the crash beam and then go to the splitter brackets, which are shown here. And then we have the air dam uh, rubber seal, which helps protect the paint. And we have two templates right there, which we will show you where those go on car here in a second. Uh, and then as far as hardware, I'm not gonna go through everything, but there is a ton of M6 hardware in the kit. As far as tools required, I recommend a cutoff wheel, Dremel would probably work, or a small jigsaw would work. That is for cutting the holes in the bumper. I have a drill, various drill bits. You need something around the 3 8 size, uh, ultimately for the rivet nuts that we will install. I have a 10 millimeter wrench, that's a good idea. I don't know if it's actually necessary, but definitely a good idea to have. We have uh, 10 through I believe 3 millimeter Allen wrench. I believe we use 10, 4, and 3, but it's a good idea to have all of them available. 9 16 wrench for the rivet nut tool. We have an impact that's a good idea to have um, for tightening the air dam. As you'll see, um, basically you kind of need something with um, that, that spins up the bolt and keeps the serrated nut on the top of the air dam. Um, stationary basically and uh, yeah that's all the kit components you'll need you probably need uh, some tape to hold on the templates but otherwise that's all you need all right so we have removed this side's plastic underbody panel a bunch of eight millimeter heads um, they're all over the place but basically just follow and remove them and then remove that and then we will tape the uh, template on. All right, at this point, the uh, template is installed. Basically, we use that location on the bumper and that location, as well as this line, which you can kind of feel there's a line underneath it. Um, this should be basically right here, should be like the back edge of the, the bumper. And then this one, you can't really feel anything. It doesn't really help you there, but um, otherwise, that is the uh, template basically fully installed. All right, so right now I have drilled holes. These two will basically make lines to the edge of the bumper. I had to make four holes on this one because we'll have to cut that out completely. I'm gonna pull off the template now and then use a Dremel to uh, basically go from hole to hole. All right, so at this point, we've put holes into the bumper. There's that one and there's that one. Then we can grab the small brackets. Where is it at? There we go. slide that up into the hole that we just made and then we mark two holes with a sharpie so that we can drill two holes for rivet nuts to be installed. Do that same thing on the outside like so. I accidentally made that mark but it's that one and that one and then we'll drill it real quick and then put some rivet nuts in there. All right so at this point we have all the rivets installed on the crash bar. And then we have to install one rivet into the bumper, and that's a plastic rivet. 
And basically that hole is already there from the factory. We just need to enlarge it to 3 8 inch and then install that. That's what it looks like when it's installed. And then on the ground, I've done some prep work. I've basically installed these upper brackets and the lower brackets together. You don't have to do that, but I feel like it's a lot easier to do it off car versus doing it on car. And that's why we put this through oval here so that you can install it. Um, you use the 16 millimeter button head cap screws, small washers and nylocks on the back. And then those already have uh, floating nut plates installed on them. So that should be uh, nice for a little bit of um, extra wiggle room and clearance. And then on the splitter blade, we have two piece, we have a two piece splitter blade and that's to keep our costs down for you guys. Um, basically you have to um, assemble the two units together and it's really simple. We use M16 by 16 millimeter button head cap screws, a fender washer on the bottom side, and then a nylock with this washer plate on the back side. And that connects the two units together really nice. And then um, I've also installed our air dam onto the splitter. The only two bolts that are tight are these two right here. All these other bolts are loosely installed because there's wiggle room. Let's see if I can, it wiggles a bit and that's, a, that's to allow it to conform to the bumper a bit better. And we need to do that once the splitter is on the car. So right now it's loose. Um, all these nuts are, are to the point where they're tight, except that one, but we'll fix that real quick. But all the nuts are tight so that when we go to tighten them from the bottom side, the serrations dig into the aluminum and then we can fully tighten it on car. At least that is the hope. Um, we are now ready to more or less install this front splitter on car. Uh, no, we're not. We have to do the brackets first. So we'll do the brackets, then we'll install front splitter. So at this point, we've installed the brackets. We are using M6 by 16 millimeter socket head cap screws with fender washers. So if you look at this one, there's a lot of adjustability. It can move left and right and forward and backwards. So that is, allows um, some some differences between people cutting the bumper and the and the bolt holes or the rivet holes in the in the crash beam. Um, hopefully everything goes together correctly, but this slop is specifically for that. Um, but anyways, we'll start with it flush front and rear on the crash beam. All right, so right now I have the three rear bolts really loosely installed. So this allows me to pivot it up and check out how these locations line up with the slots on the splitter. So basically I'm gonna find a hole that kind of lines up, put a bolt in it loosely, and then I can kind of go around to all the other ones and figure out which brackets may need modified. And I think I'll actually leave the splitter on in this case, and then I can actually loosen the bolts up there and, and move it as needed and then recheck it. It'll be pretty simple, but once it's installed, it'll be able to be removed and installed pretty easily as long as the brackets don't get removed as well. All right, so I am lucky. Everything lined up, everything is installed at this point. There will be a logo plate here. This is the very first production article. It is headed to Jordan after I am done test fitting it on our car because he's been patiently sort of waiting for us to release this for, for a long time. Um, a little hint, this bolt is basically your forward and rearward location. Um, 
that does not change on any of the chassis. So I would use that location to, to bolt that on first. And then I guess check all eight of these locations from there. Um, as you can see, the bottom side is extremely flat. Everything is recessed. None of the hardware sits down. So at this point, we're gonna actually lower the car down and then we're going to work on the air dam and get that to fit on, I don't know what you wanna call that from the factory, a factory air dam. I don't know, I'm not a fan of that. I'm a hater. Anyway, um, we'll get that to line up with the black part on the, the factory chassis. And that's basically, we're just gonna be pushing on this um, and then tightening all of these small M6 bolts. All right, so I really need four hands right now, but I'll try and show you what I'm talking about. So right now the air dam is loose and you might be able to see there's a tiny gap there. And basically the whole air dam moves. Let's see if I can get a better angle here. Let's see, I can't really. So basically we're gonna push on that. I don't know, if, can you see that move? We're gonna push on that and then tighten the bolt from below and basically make the entire air dam fit the front's pretty good right now, but it'll get a little better and make it fit really nice along this very odd shape. And then uh, overall, I think the install is done. We just gotta do a bolt check and make sure we tighten all the bolts. And then we'll do some quick testing, probably throw, throw a few guys on there, you know, for, for Instagram, Facebook. Everyone likes to see people on car parts. All right, so I went around the entire air dam and tightened all the bolts i also cleaned it off real quick from some of the bug guts but that looks awesome it really turned out really great um, as far as fitment uh, it seals up really nicely against the front bumper in all the locations overall i think it looks pretty great as far as total fitment and um, the weave on the carbon poly weave splitter looks pretty cool as well Working on bringing this to production now. Uh, this was the first production model. Heading to Jordan Best. All right, guys, that concludes the front splitter install. We have our Russian intern. No shit. Hi. <laughs> on the splitter, 300 pounds on splitter, no problem. Um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed that install manual. Uh, tune in for some more testing as we test the Supra, the GT350R out. And um, yeah, let us know what else you want to see on our YouTube channel. See you.